Today we're going to talk about power cables and how you can pick a wire size for your cables that maximizes performance and minimizes risks. A question I frequently receive is related to wire. That is, what size wire is proper for a particular application? Selecting the proper size or gauge of wire is important, as too thin of a wire can be a fire risk and too thick a wire is cumbersome and not cost effective. Which leads me into this question I received from Ken. Ken's building a go kit and isn't certain about what kind of wire to buy to make up for his assorted power cables. This question came at the perfect time as I was in the process of building new power cables for my FT891. With the recent modification on my rig to the power pole connectors, I needed to make new power cables to mate with it. So let's jump into this topic. Picking wire gauge can be a challenge. 12 volt DC power can drop greatly over distance. So choosing the right wire gauge makes a big difference. Plus, the greater the current we draw from the wire, the bigger the resistance and voltage drop. The general rule for DC power is to keep the voltage drop under 3% for the length of your cable. If the drop is greater than 3%, then choose a larger wire. This will properly power your equipment and keep the current draw within the specifications of the wire. Overloading a wire is inefficient at best and dangerous at worst. So how do we know what size wire to use? Well, simply stated, voltage drop is current multiplied by the total resistance of the circuit conductors. You know, Ohm's law. In order to make this calculation, you'll need to know the total resistance of the circuit, which is made up of, the of factors such as the wire size or gauge, uh, total length of the conductors, and the resistivity of the wire material itself. Now the easiest method to determine voltage drop without having to measure the resistance with a meter or looking up values in various tables is to use one of the online calculators to do the math for you. One of my favorites can be found over at rapidtables.com. I'll put links to these calculators in the video description below. Basically, in how to use the calculator, you will select your wire type, size, cable length, current type, voltage, and the maximum amperage. The calculator will tell you the voltage drop, the percentage of drop, and the wire's resistance. Say, for example, I want a six foot power cable for my transceiver. If I select 12 gauge wire, enter the length of six feet, uh, select DC current, 13 volts, which is gonna be the nominal voltage of my battery, and 20 amps of current draw, which is my maximum current draw. I'll get a voltage drop of 0.38 volts or 2.93%. That's just under the 3% target, so a 12 gauge wire would be the proper size for my application. If I would change the wire size to 14 gauge, the voltage drop percentage climbs up to 4.7%, which is outside the recommendation. I'd either have to shorten the cable or use it in a lower amperage situation. Now for a couple of real life examples. In my camping trailer, I'm using a 12 gauge wire from my solar panel to my charge controller. The cable run is about 14 feet long and uh, the 200 watt panel puts out close to 12 amps. At a 17 volt open circuit, this is slightly over the 3% power drop and I honestly should be using 10 gauge wire, but it's close enough to be within the safety tolerances. I also have a 100 watt portable solar panel and with that I use about 20 feet of 14 gauge wire to run from the panel to the charge controller. Since that panel uh, outputs between 5 to 6 amps of current at 17 volts, that length of 14 gauge is within the 3% tolerance. I'm just going to jump in here and say that if you find this video interesting and would like to see some more like it, hit like and subscribe. That's my indicator to produce more of these types of videos. Thank you for your support. Now for powering equipment, the amperage or current draw is much higher, so I'll use a larger cable. Uh, my power connection cable from the battery to the transceivers are all 12 gauge. This handles 23 amps at 13 volts, which is the maximum current draw of my FT891 at 100 watts in transmit. While I usually transmit at a lower power, I did the calculations for the max power I would generate, just to be on the safe side. Now in my vehicle, 
I ran 10 gauge cable from the battery to the 50 watt mobile transceiver. I used 12 feet of cable, but at that length, it's rated for 40 amps of current draw, which gives me the capability for two transceivers without having to add a second cable. For the battery to radio connections, it's okay to be a little oversized. Just make sure that you're properly fused for the current load of your cable. Now it should be noted that in commercial photovoltaic solar systems, installers use a slightly different metric and will strive for no more than a 2% drop in voltage in their DC circuits. This has been a hard and fast rule for a very long time and we can be traced back to the days when solar cells were expensive and copper cheap. So spending a bit more money on copper wiring was a relatively inexpensive way to increase system efficiency. Now that solar cells are much cheaper, studies have shown that modern systems can handle a greater voltage drop without a correspondingly greater loss in efficiency. So what does that mean for the average ham wanting to use uh, some solar to charge their go box battery? Well, the 2% voltage drop goal is, is a good one to meet in order to optimize performance, but in reality, the 3% limit that we commonly use is easier and cheaper to, to achieve and will reduce resistive heating losses. So to recap, voltage drop in a wire is due to the resistive heating from the wire size, the length, and the material. DC power cables should be sized to carry the expected current draw of their load. Longer cables will require a thicker conductor, and in order to minimize resist resistive heating, you will want a voltage drop of no more than 3%. I hope this helps you in building your box and uh, properly sizing the power cables for your transceivers. The power cables that come with most radios are woefully undersized, so a proper cable will help make your radio system more efficient. Questions or comments, leave them uh, down below. Thanks for watching. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day in 73. And hey, Ken, uh, thanks a lot for um, sending me your question. And, and I hope that this expanded reply is a little bit more in-depth than, than what we conversed about in the email. If any of you have questions about um, a amateur radio, power, uh, solar, things like that, drop me an email, and I'd love to uh, feature them in a future video.